This Casual Friday is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You, it's a huge risk to just open the door because like, the minute you walk out and someone's like goes in, they know you right. clogged the toilet. Unless yeah. they're a good actor. They leave, the toilet's clogged, they walk out just like, oh, I just went in there and it's yeah. fucking some asshole clogged the toilet. Yeah. yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been thinking a lot lately about No Man's Sky because everything's boring right now mm -hmm. in the games industry, uh, as it usually is during the summer. And like, what an incredible moment that was at E3 when yeah. when Sean came out on stage and talked about that game. And I, it got me thinking about like moments like that, specifically when people debut games. I know this wasn't the first debut, but when people show footage of games that aren't necessarily out yet, and it's all mm. you know these huge ideas and like really awesome things, many of which never even come to fruition. Mm. Are there any games like that for you guys where you've seen something and just the concept of it, you've like, I never thought about this before, but it makes so much sense. Yeah. My mind is completely blown. I think the easy answer for that question is probably Fez. Um, I remember the mm. first time I that's saw Fez's one. like 2D, 3D mechanic in motion, I was like, yeah. that's pretty clever yeah. and no one's really done it before. And then over the course of the 100 million years I can spend development, other games come out like Crush on the PSP that sort of played with the idea, but like that, I remember the yeah. first time I saw that and I was like, that's a new thing. That's yeah. a thing I haven't seen before. Yeah. What about you? I feel like, I mean, I really like, I really thought the, the concept of like the Divisions demo at uh, the, the last, the E3 before this last mm -hmm. one was totally mind blowing. Like the pitch of it. And obviously, like they showed hardly anything off. There was the door closing, which was just like, I thought, cool. And I talked about, I talked about You're this so game too much. How many, how many casual Fridays we've been talking about the door? I know. Uh, this is going to be the hundredth, I think. But, the week um, that game comes out, we're going to be like, Max has been playing it a lot, but he has no achievements. So He's just been watched. standing in front of a taxi, shutting a door over and over. Yep. That's going to happen. But I think that, and, and so maybe it's not fair to even pick that because it's, it is such a, like, it's just these ideas that they yeah. have for the game that they probably will definitely not execute on. Um, yeah. But it's the idea of this world uh, that other people are in with me. That's And so it's not necessarily an MMO, but it, it's like I'm not necessarily having to join like a queue to have yeah. a multiplayer yeah. experience. That this kind of seamless element, that that idea that they're pitching at that first E3 was so exciting. Yeah. But I, mean, I was just like, oh my god, I can imagine this future. And I, I don't, it's not here yet. Yeah. Uh, felt, it's not um, happening, but that's I've, so cool. I felt something similar about Journey when they first showed off the seamless multi, the like anonymous oh, yeah. multiplayer aspect of that. I was like, this is such a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. How is this the first time somebody has thought of this? Right. Yeah. Um, same goes for uh, Metrico, mm -hmm. which not multiplayer, um, but just the concept of that game was something that I, I had no idea what it was going into it, and then you play five minutes of it, and it's like you have you have literal goosebumps mm -hmm. from how good it is and yeah. how it makes you think in ways that you didn't even realize that you could think. Yeah, I also it's felt incredible. that way about uh, Skyrim when it came out. Like I was, oh I my think, god, I think there's a, yeah, there's like a small group of people that were excited for the next Elder Scrolls game. But when that game came out and it was like, oh my God, this world is beautiful and so huge. And I can just like, I can walk forever and not that you would want to do that really, but like the fact that there was that freedom and it like, you're like, oh my God, this yeah. is like a real like living world. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that I, was incredible. I have yeah. a lot of issues with Skyrim as a game. Um, I, but I had a ton of glitches, I had a lot of problems. Super glitchy, combat wasn't great and I wasn't even that into the universe, but I still found myself spending at least a hundred hours in it yeah. simply because like, that world feels so tangible and physical yeah. and it, yeah. it obeys its own rules. Like being able to pick up anything and do anything and throw anything and talk to anyone, it's like, this might not be my cup of tea in terms of genre even, yeah. but it's it's fleshed out and, and detailed in a way not a lot of games have the scope mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, know? for being such a video game, Skyrim really lets you forget that you're yeah. playing a video game a lot I had a times. rule when I was playing through Skyrim, which was I needed to, I didn't have fun in Skyrim unless my session was at least an hour long, because that's how long it would take me to get immersed in it. Yeah. And unless I had had at least two beers. Two beers in one hour with Skyrim really? and I would have an awesome night. But anything less than that, I would just be like, I'm a little bored. Yeah, there's something just about games with like worlds like that. Um, no Man's Sky is, is probably a very similar thing. It's mm -hmm. And especially procedurally generated games. Uh, Minecraft is another really good example of a game that's so easy to get lost in. Yeah. And you feel so immersed in the world. And at the same time, like, par I, I wonder if part of that appeal is the fact that you know at any moment, like, 
you could just exit the game and never never revisit it again. Mm. I mean, Minecraft's a little different because they have seeds and you'll always be able to go back to like a world if you know the seed number, but like there's just something about like being plopped into like a brand new world that nobody else on the planet yep. has ever or will ever encounter. God, totally. Like no that's that's the number one thing that appeals to me about No Man's Sky. If that game was not procedurally generated, It'd be cool, but I'd probably get bored of it after totally. like 10 hours. But there's there's something cool about that sense of exploration. I think that's kind of why we've seen over the past two, three years, this resurgence of like, of roguelikes as a, as yeah. a genre. And I, I think part of it is a direct knee-jerk reaction to the fact that games aren't hard anymore generally. AAA games very rarely are difficult. Yeah. But I think yeah. the other part is the element of death is permanent and you restart everything entirely and it builds a whole new world for you. I mean, that's yeah. the reason that I'm still playing Spelunky all these years later. Is because Spelunky is different every time, and every time I play that game, I learn a specific lesson. Yeah. And every time I die, it's my fault, but I still die a lot. I've died thousands of times in Spelunky. Yeah. But I feel like, so like I'm I'm exploring this world and learning more about the way it works. Yeah, Spelunky is cool because it, it does have that random element to it, but it's also like very hard, just like mm -hmm. retro games were back mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, back then you never saw games like Proteus where that had no like right. immediate goal. You know, it was yeah. just like the goal is exploration. That's yeah. such a new thing. Yeah. But I think we forget sometimes that it, it really is. Yeah, it's. I think uh, FTL is like the first game in a really long time where I was like. I'm not sure if I can beat this. You know, like, this is really, really hard. Yeah. And it's like, I keep, I'm still playing it. Uh, yeah. I have finally beaten it once. <gasps> but, you beat uh, it? Yeah. It was oh one of the my most God. amazing moments in the world. Which ship? Uh, the, the Kestrel, actually. Really? Huh. The, Which difficulty? That's the. Shut up, you know, Nick. Nobody wants Nick to. Nick tries to play, downplay my accomplishments because I've beaten FTL like eight times on I, easy. And I never run on easy. Congrats, but guys, on beating you. FTL on easy. I'm very You know what? Guy. If you can't beat the game, on normal, then it's natural. I'm gonna to try on normal now, first. okay? I haven't beaten it. It's at really all. hard to beat on normal. I have gotten just... so close. I've gotten to the third phase of the boss like eight times on normal. The tricky, yeah. so the thing is like, ugh, whatever. We don't need to get into it. No, we should. No, what's well, the trick? FTL. I mean, it's it's kind of relevant because that's one of those games that is totally un uninteresting from like a artistic perspective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until you play it, and then you realize how deep and complex it actually right. is. Like, like there's there's two different kinds of games. There's games that look totally unimpressive and are amazing, and you can get like literally years and years of play out of. Yeah. And then there's ones that look awesome and suck when you Just actually super play them. And like the first in the first few times you play, and you get uh, you get like blown up or whatever, you think. Like, oh my god, this game, it's really hard and it's all luck. I yeah. just have to it, get lucky. Yeah. No. And then you, the more you play it, you get to this other level where you're like, oh my god, there's like this amazing strategy and that everyone can actually do differently. I've talked to a bunch of different people oh, yeah. that have their different, like, you know, things that they are looking for when they go to a shop or their, I guess, their yeah. ship yeah. builds almost. And, like, that's really important. Once you figure out, like, oh, this weapon is crucial for my boss fight or whatever, or by this uh, uh, sector, yeah, uh -huh. I need this many shields, stuff like that. Mm. And it's not luck really, there, that plays a role because it's like procedurally generated, but um, even with bad luck, it's still possible to be totally. That game. I, I think that's why I prefer games you study like yeah. FTL and Spelunky, where you start over. You don't. There's no progress. You don't like level up your ship or your weapons or anything over the course of multiple games. You start over from the beginning and every time, and that's satisfying to me because it means when I do get further, it's purely because I got better at the game. Exactly. There's a little yeah. bit of luck, but like with Spelunky, like ignoring the shortcuts, which you should do if you're a real Spelunky player, you beat that game for the first time, and it's not because you grinded until your jumps were more powerful, because that shit sure. doesn't exist. You right. got to the end of Spelunky because you got better at Spelunky. Yeah. And that to me is like, that. I would take that any day over like prestiging in Call of Duty, just because it's like, that was, prestiging in Call of Duty, even though the game can be fun for a lot of people, I think it's fun, um, comes as a result of you put a lot of hours in. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could prestige in Call of Duty and suck at Call of Duty. Yeah, you can feel right. yourself getting better at FTL. Like yeah. the first time I played it and I yeah. approached the boss, I was like, this like this is literally impossible. Yeah, There's yeah, no yeah, way totally. anybody on earth could ever That's, beat this. That was this. my reaction too. I was like, this can't be done. And, and then I played it so, so much, and then I beat it for the first time, and literally everything clicked. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I get this game now. Yeah, and, you, and, you, and it's like the minute you beat the boss, it's like you, it's not like you got it really before the boss and that's why you were able to beat it. It's like you just kind of like stumble through like this, the, the darkness and you somehow put align things in a way and then you beat it and then yeah. you're like, oh, I get it. I, I get, get it. why all these things that I did up till yeah. now worked. And, yeah, and I think that's what I love about the games. Even when you're succeeding in FTL, even when you are on top of everything and you're getting to the final boss and you feel like you actually managed to get all the equipment you need and your health is full, 
I can never shake the feeling in FDL that it's like you're hanging off the edge of a cliff just by your fingernails. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah. if I make one wrong move, if I get yeah. too cocky, same with Spelunky, if I get too cocky, even for a second, it's over. Yeah. Um, it plays with your, your confidence levels. It a lot. does. And a lot of people chalk a, a lot of the game up to luck, but really, if you know, like, if you can strategize what situations to avoid and which ones to buy into, like, mm -hmm. Your luck will improve also. Yeah. So even the luck part is really just strategy. I think I agree totally. because like there are so many situations you encounter in the game where it's like, let's say you get to a planet and there's something you can go investigate on the surface. It's luck whether or not you go to the surface and you get an item or one of your crew members dies, but what's not luck is choosing to go there or not. You can exactly. choose to be conservative and just move on, get yeah. no items, and don't, that's... Don't that's go a... save them from those giant alien spiders. Oh, gonna, that's dumb. I never do that. No, I'm no do that. literally nine times out of ten, it's I have lost it. a crew member. Right? It's not worth it. Their lives are too important. I always have like one rock monster on my crew. By the time I get to like the one where I've viral disease is spread out, then I send him down. It's like chill because he can't get sick. Oh, that's right. Uh, See, that's... I'm still discovering things about that game. God, yeah. that's incredible. It's a good game. It really is. FTL. Best game of all time. <laughs> yep, basically. When you I beat cannot. It? On easy? Yeah, on easy. <laughs> Punk. I want a Corgi so bad. There's one. I know. Can Go I get it. it? Yeah. I want the black and white one. They're like the Oompa Loompas of dogs. <laughs> so true. That is really true. Yeah. Aww. I can't argue with that. Also, they're usually orange. You notice that? Yeah, I like the black and white ones. Are Oompa Loompas usually orange? Yeah. It's perfect. Not many people know that. It's kind of a secret. It's a fun fact. There's no fun fact about Oompa Loompas. Let's go play with puppies now. All right. Okay. It's, you say that like it's a nice thing, but what you're talking about oh. is dog napping. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go dog napping. That's implied. They're so cute. I'll nap that baby too, given the opportunity. That's why we have to supervise you when we go to the park, Tara. I know. Because last time you came back to the office with four dogs and a baby, <gasps> all in your arms, and the cops came. You can't take me anywhere without a harness. All right. That's not sexual. I was about to say, we can't use that line. You know, buying razors is a real pain in the bottom, but luckily, that's where Dollar Shave Club comes in. Just ask this real testimonial from a guy we found who uses it. I use Dollar Shave Club every day. Dollar Shave Club lets you circumvent the store and delivers razors directly to your front door for as little as a dollar a month. It's not just limited to razors either. Dollar Shave Club offers butt wipes, shaving cream, and all sorts of bathroom goodies for you to put on your face and everywhere else. Shave time, shave money, and join now at dollarshaveclub.com slash casualfriday. Do you remember on the box art for Super Mario Galaxy, there were little stars all over it, and if you looked at the stars that were on certain letters in Super Mario Galaxy, it spelled out, oh. you are Mr. Gay? That's not a real thing. I swear to God, go check. You are Mr. Gay. See, don't you think if they wanted to do something like that, they would just do you are gay and not Mr. Gay. Yeah, it is all on purpose. Weird. That was to throw you off the sense. So you would think, right, this yeah. way there's this way there's like doubt, you know? Yeah. Easily, right? This way it's there's like, like what if you're a lady then, then you can't be Mr. Gay. You know, Nintendo's not awesome at dealing with things about like like gay issues. So That's true. they probably didn't. Gender is not their strong suit. No, not their best area of expertise. Mm. Oh, this beer's getting warm. Nice and hot. Oh, I like my beer is hot in the sun. I like, you know, in, in the in the England, they uh, drink it warm. They think their beer is hot. Really? Right yeah, out of the kiln. Yeah, I think it's a real thing. But that's not good. Warm. Warm beer is disgusting. Well, you're a dumb American. That's a good point. Oh, John Taffer taught me that. He said the proper temperature for a beer is like 47 degrees or something. But he meant Celsius. If it's warm, it gets like shitty foam Don't. and stuff. Don't touch my elbow. What is this, coffee talk? Yeah. You are so pale. Oh my god. I'm on that paleo diet. I'm like in the middle. Yeah. I'm like your child. Oh, uh, look at this. That's like a really good, like, uh, gradient, gradient yeah. right here. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's really How are We you got so every, pale? every color in the rainbow from white to off white. We've really got a it's ton really of diversity. Good. From light honest. peach to dark peach. It's laying like in, in yeah, it's really like perfectly in the middle. That's incredible. I'm actually tan right now, too. I'm probably normally Nick's color. Yeah, that's why we can share makeup. Yeah. Did you get wasted in Vegas? Yeah, a lot of things happen in Vegas. Mm, did they stay there or did they come with you? Uh, they will haunt me for the rest of my okay. life, yeah. surely. Yeah. I tried to get picked up by this uh, girl who's like, I know all the cool places to hang out. And I was like, oh, would you, you so you're proposing to escort me to these places? Like, in Vegas? Wild. You didn't yeah. use the E word, did you? No, I didn't say anything. You anyways. could get arrested. Like, no, no, escort thank you. me. Don't say that they could be a cop. Yeah. And then it's over. Could have been. This was wild, I didn't think that was real. And then I went there and it was. 
Vegas crazy. Vegas is a magical, crazy place. It is. Yeah, I don't know that I'm crazy about it. I love no, it. No, I think it's the grossest place. It's really yucky. Oh, it's so fun though. It's for, a blast for a weekend, though. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's only fun for two days. I, I Three days max. Right. It's fun for one night. One night in Vegas. Play a couple of black craps. Black craps, yeah. If you don't <laughs> like gambling, then you'll hate it. I don't like gambling. I like gambling, it's yeah. fun. I like eating at fine restaurants and drinking. What, what's wrong with any of those? These are things? all good things on their own, but when all you put things. them all in a in a nasty desert, <laughs> it suddenly becomes. Well, a that's lot. why you don't go outside in Vegas. Ever. What happens inside in Vegas stays inside yes. in Vegas. Can that just be the whole episode? We don't even talk about video games. Yeah. <laughs> just three tableaus about poop and Vegas mm -hmm. and beer. Talk about New Vegas. Yeah, I couldn't really talk about that much. Yeah.